Madam Secretary, will you uh, please call the roll? Mr. Coburn. Coburn here. Mr. Grimsley. Grimsley here. Mr. Shannon. Here. Mr. Frymiller. Frymiller here. Mr. McCallan. McCallan here. Mr. Dyson. Dyson here. Mr. Alexander. Alexander here. Mr. LaForge. LaForge here. Mr. Peterson. Here. Item number uh, 116, it's approval of the minutes of the meeting uh, for August the 2nd. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. Do I have a second? Peterson, second. second. Any discussion? Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Mr. Coburn. Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley. Grimsley, yes. Mr. Shannon. Here. Yes. Mr. Frymiller. Frymiller, yes. Mr. McCown. McCown, yes. Mr. Dyson. Dyson, yes. Mr. Alexander. Alexander, yes. Mr. LaForge. LaForge, yes. Mr. Peterson. Yes. <clears throat> Passed by unanimous. Uh, at this time, uh, who's going to, who, who presents his consent document? Uh, huh? Me? You'll read it. Yeah. Okay. Are there. <clears throat> The yeah, consent docket contains item 117, 118, 119, 120, and 121. And these are items that have all been discussed in the early committee meetings. If any commissioners would like to pull an individual item out of discussion, he may do so at this time. Otherwise, do I hear a motion for approval of the consent docket? Coburn, so moved. Do I have a second? Second, by Shannon. Madam Secretary, will you call the roll, please? Mr. Coburn. Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley. Grimsley, yes. Mr. Shannon. Yes. Mr. Frymiller. Frymiller, yes. Mr. McCowan. McCowan, yes. Mr. Dyson. Dyson, yes. Mr. Alexander. Alexander, yes. Mr. LaForge. LaForge, yes. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Item number 121 is the... Uh, Declaration of an emergency bridge repair project. Uh, Mr. Davis, you're recognized to present. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, agenda item number 122 is an emergency declaration by the director. This is an information only item. Uh, no action will be needed. On August 12th, the bridge on County Road 1990 over I-44 in Cotton County, approximately two and a half miles north of the Texas state line, was struck by a vehicle that was part of an ongoing construction project in the area. The impact caused catastrophic damage, leaving the outside beam of Span 3 with no structural integrity and no load-bearing capacity. They're showing some pictures of the damage up here now. Uh, District 7 crews and OHP immediately rerouted eastbound I-44 traffic onto State Highway 36 at mile marker number one, running it north to the I-44 interchange at US 70 near Randlett. While the detour was sufficient to carry the additional traffic, State Highway 36 is an uncontrolled two-way, two-lane facility that was not designed to carry interstate-type traffic. It was imperative that I-44 be returned to the interstate route as soon as possible. For safety reasons, the damaged portion of the bridge had to be removed before traffic was allowed to pass underneath. District 7 forces did not have the capacity to perform this work. It was recommended that an emergency project be started immediately to remove the loose concrete and the unsupported portion of the bridge and that another project be initiated to repair and restore the bridge to its original functionality. In accordance with Title 61 of the Oklahoma State Statutes and Oklahoma Administrative Code, Secretary Gass declared an emergency and is asking through a related agenda item that the Transportation Commission authorize an emergency contract for the repairs needed on the bridge. Estimated cost for the already completed removals and the forthcoming emergency repairs is $315,000. And if I could, Mr. Chairman, just give you a short timeline of events and give me a chance to brag on our folks just a little bit. Um, this hit happened shortly before noon on Thursday, uh, August the 12th. Traffic control was placed and traffic was diverted. An emergency declaration was requested by District 7, was declared by the Secretary, and a preliminary plan for the removal of the damage section was all done by 4 p.m. that afternoon. At 8 a.m. on the next day, on Friday, Interested contractors met at the site and were given remo a removal plan and asked to submit bids by 2 o'clock that afternoon. At 2.15, four bids were open and C3 construction out of Ada, Oklahoma was recognized as the low bidder. 
workers and equipment were on the project site by 7 o'clock that night, and at 9 o'clock, work began. Uh, shortly after noon on Saturday, just over 48 hours uh, after the incident, the detour was lifted and traffic was restored to I-44. So if I could, I'd just like to recognize the folks down at District 7, Jay Earp, District Engineer, uh, Cole Von Felt, and all the maintenance guys that help with traffic control down there, ODOT Bridge Division, Justin's group, uh, Wes, Walt, and Oscar, and several others here in the central office, and obviously our partners at C3 Construction uh, for all doing a great job down there. And probably the best part of this story, there were two people in that truck and other traffic on I-44, and everyone walked away with no injuries. So, that is, that is wonderful. Thank you. That, that should have made headlines on the news. Um, I, I got underway and, and, and didn't make, we have a couple of, of guests here today. Uh, uh, Mike Patterson, former executive here, uh, we're glad to have you, and, and, uh, and Bobby Stem, AIG, appreciate you being here today. Uh, item number 123 is a programming item. Uh, Mr. Tigler, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, Mr. Secretary. Item 123 is a follow-up to 122. This is the programming item to uh, repair the vehicle damage on County Road uh, 1990. The estimated cost to repair this damage is, is $250,000. The project can be ready for an October 2021 letting, and of course the party responsible for the damage is known. Approval is recommended. Try to answer any other questions if you have any this morning. Are there any questions? I'm confused. It's already been fixed. It, that first phase was all the removal to, to get ready for this project, Commissioner. Oh, excuse me. Yes. Okay. No, you're fine. Good question. This is, this is a different one from the, the, yeah, this, the, the item that we just heard what didn't require a vote. It's, yeah. it's uh, approved and gone. And, and this is at the Texas border. Yep. This is to do the design for this project so we can have the repair, put it back the way it was before it was hit. It's, it's, it's been repaired in its function. The, you restored traffic within 48 hours. That's been restored. The traffic's been restored, but the beam has to be replaced, and so that construction part needs to be fixed yet okay. to the bridge. Pardon me. Do I hear a motion? Any other questions? I'll make the motion. <coughs> so moved. Do I have a second? Over. Uh, Madam Secretary, will you call the roll? Mr. Coburn. Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley. Grimsley, yes. Mr. Shannon. Yes. Mr. Frymiller. Frymiller, yes. Mr. McCowan. McCowan, yes. Mr. Dyson. Dyson, yes. Mr. Alexander. Alexander, yes. Mr. LaForge. LaForge, yes. Mr. Peterson. Yes. The vote passed unanimous. Uh, Mr. Tigler, you may continue with item 124. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have eight engineering contracts this month, five statewide and three project specific. Part A is our statewide all districts on demand engineering service, services. We have selected six firms to provide these engineering services. They are Atkins North America, Cowan Group Engineering, Garver, Smith Roberts Boldeschweiler, Team Design, and Tetratech. Part B is that statewide all districts are on demand airborne LIDAR mapping. We have selected two firms to do this service. They are Aerial Data Service and Bearing Tree Land Survey. Part C is a statewide, all districts are on-demand cultural resources inventories, NRHP evaluations and mitigation proposals. We have selected six firms to provide this service. They are Amatera Environmental, Blanton & Associates, Cox McLean Environmental Consulting, Integrated Environmental Solutions, Mead & Hunt, and Wood Environmental and Infrastructure Solutions. Part D is our statewide all districts on-demand environmental services for local government projects. We have selected eight firms to do this service, and they are Able Consulting, C.H. Guernsey and Company, C.C. Environmental, Cox McLean Environmental Consulting, CPNY, Garber, Kleinfelder, and Olson. Part E is our statewide all districts architectural services in preparation of building construction plans. Department has selected CEC Corporation provide site adaptation for our port of entry and way station buildings. Total not to exceed amount is $3 million. Part F, Muskogee County and District 1. The department has selected EST to provide engineering and construction plans for I-40 over the Arkansas River. Total not to exceed amount is $380,350. This project is included in the eight-year construction work plan with a scheduled let date in 2028. I just want to let you know this is phase one of a two-phase contract. 
This is going to do the bridge assessment and the survey and some environmental. Part G, Beckham County and District 5, we have selected Freeze and Nichols to prepare construction plans for State Highway 152. Total not to exceed amount is $905,000. This project is also included in that year construction work plan and let date of 2027. And finally, Part H in Tillman County and District 5, Department has selected Consor Engineer to, uh, to do the construction plans for five locations of these bridges. These are bridge and approach projects. Total not to exceed amount is $654,650. These projects, or this project, is in the eight-year construction work plan in 2027. Approval is recommended. Try to answer any questions if you gentlemen have any this morning. Do you have a motion for approval? <coughs> motion. Senator makes a motion. And second? Second. Any discussion? Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Mr. Coburn. Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley. Grimsley, yes. Mr. Shannon. Yes. Mr. Fry Miller. Fry Miller, yes. Mr. McCallan. McCallan, yes. Mr. Dyson. Dyson, yes. Mr. Alexander. Alexander, yes. Mr. LaForge. LaForge, yes. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Pass unanimous. You may continue with items 125. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Item 125 are our engineering contract supplements. I have three parts are this, uh, this month. Part A is our statewide. All districts are on system bridge standards. Uh, we previously authorized and selected CP and Y to do the on system bridge standards for our reinforced concrete box culverts. Supplement not to exceed amount is $384,867. Part B is our Seminole County and District 3. Previously authorized Benham Design to perform engineering and final construction plans for State Highway 99. Supplement not to exceed amount is $244,162. This project is in the eight-year construction work plans in a let date for 2028. And finally, Part C in Osage County in District 8. Previously authorized Poe and Associates to perform engineering and construction plans for State Highway 20. Supplement not to exceed amount is $12,269. This project is also an eight-year construction work plan in 2022. Approval is recommended. I'll try to answer any question if you have any this morning. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved by Shannon. Do I, second. Are there any, any discussion? Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Mr. Coburn. Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley. Grimsley, yes. Mr. Shannon. Yes. Mr. Fry Miller. Fry Miller, yes. Mr. McCown. McCown, yes. Mr. Dyson. Dyson, yes. Mr. Alexander. Alexander, yes. Mr. LaForge. LaForge, yes. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mr. Leonard will present the uh, item number 126. Morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, Mr. Secretary. Uh, I'd like to present item number 126, parts A through double D. These are change orders on projects which have a cumulative total of change orders of $75,000 or less. This item is presented for your information only, but I'd be glad to try and answer any questions. Are there any, any questions on this issue? Uh, you, you may go ahead and, and uh, present uh, item number 127. All right. Uh, item number 127, parts A through double F. These are change orders on projects which have a cumulative total of change orders greater than $75,000. Your rec approval is recommended, and I'd be glad to answer any questions. You've heard the presentation. Do I have a motion for approval? Would you move for approval? Second. Alexander, second. Uh, any discussion or any questions on this issue? Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Mr. Coburn. Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley. Grimsley, yes. Mr. Shannon. Yes. Mr. Fry Miller. Fry Miller, yes. Mr. McCown. McCown, yes. Mr. Dyson. Dyson, yes. Mr. Alexander. Alexander, yes. Mr. LaForge. LaForge, yes. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Leonard. Item number 128 is a proposed bid opening. Uh, Mr. Hackney, you're recognized. Robert Hackney, Comptroller Division, Project Funding Manager. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Item 128, proposed bid openings, consists of the final November 2021 and the tentative January 2021 bid openings. The Department recommends approval. You've heard the presentation. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Second. 
Alexander. Any discussion? Madam Secretary, call the roll, please. Mr. Coburn. Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley. Grimsley, yes. Mr. Shannon. Yes. Mr. Fry Miller. Fry Miller, yes. Mr. McCowan. McCowan, yes. Mr. Dyson. Dyson, yes. Mr. Alexander. Alexander, yes. Mr. LaForge. LaForge, yes. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Passed by unanimous. Uh, item number 129 is a settlement for damage to state property. Uh, Mrs. Helms. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission. Agenda item 129 is for the settlement for damages to state property. And it has two parts. Part A is for a damage to a stop sign in the amount of $420. And the uh, policy limit, total, total expenses or damages exceed the policy limit of $25,000. And the department is receiving a pro rata distribution of the proceeds. In acceptance of the settlement of the $132.32 leaves a remaining balance of $287.68, which is uncollectible. And part B is damage to a cable barrier uh, with a cost of $701.52. And total damages in this instance also exceeds $25,000 of the policy limit. And the offer is a pro rata distribution in the amount of $315.98. And acceptance of this settlement leaves a remaining balance of $385.54, which also is uncollectible or considered administratively uncollectible. And the department requests and recommends approval of this item. You've heard the presentation. Do I have a motion for approval? Just a point of order. These damages are always minor. Does it mean that the policy is exhausted and the person, you've assessed that the person doesn't have the capability of making a payment? Okay, so this particular does exist, uh, exceed the policy limit, but this is considered administratively, un, you know, exhausted, you don't want to mess with expensive it. to <coughs> collect the remaining from the individual. Because Understand. if you did, you'd have to reject the offer, and then you go straight after the individual. Okay. Thank you. Do I have a motion for approval? Children so moved. Second. Alexander, second. Any other discussion? Madam Secretary, call the roll, please. Mr. Coburn. Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley. Grimsley, yes. Mr. Shannon. Yes. Mr. Fry Miller. Fry Miller, yes. Mr. McCowan. McCowan, yes. Mr. Dyson. Dyson, yes. Mr. Alexander. Alexander, yes. Mr. LaForge. LaForge, yes. Mr. Peterson. Yes. The vote was unanimous. Thank you. <laughs> Item number 130 is the awards of contracts by Mr. Dells. You're recognized there. Good morning, Commissioners. Mr. Chairman. Morning. Uh, item 130, our recommendations for award. Uh, my presentation this morning will be in three parts. Part A is uh, with regard to the deferral from the July 15th bid opening. The following item referred to by call order was deferred from the July 15th bid opening. It is now recommended that this item be awarded to the low bidder, and that was call order 195. Part B, our recommendations from the August 19th bid opening. It is recommended that the following items from the August 19th bid opening referred to by call order be awarded. It's call orders 410, 415, 420, 425, 435, 437, 450, 455, 460, 475, 478, 480, and 485. It is recommended that the following items from the August 19th bid opening referred to by call order be rejected. That's call orders 400, 401, 402, 403, 404 and 430. And lastly, Part C, um, this is an information only item. Uh, we had a special bid opening on August 20th. Uh, it was held on August 20th to repair a bridge hit on I-244 over Main Street in the city of Tulsa. Bids were submitted on August 20th and a contract was awarded at that time to PBX Corporation for $24,913.20. The estimated cost of the work was $25,000. That concludes our recommendations for award and your approval is requested. Question, can you remind me why 195 was deferred? Yes, it, um, that was from July bid opening. The city of Midwest City needed more time at the time of our commission meeting to make a decision on the approval. 
and secure the funding. So since then, they have approved the additional funding and they want to recommend award. And the bid was appropriate to the engineer's estimate? Yes, sir. Okay. Right. Yes, sir. Thank you. You've heard the presentation. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Second. Forward. Second. Any discussion? Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Mr. Coburn. Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley. Grimsley, yes. Mr. Shannon. Yes. Mr. Frymiller. Frymiller, yes. Mr. McCallan. McCallan, yes. Mr. Dyson. Dyson, yes. Mr. Alexander. Alexander, yes. Mr. LaForge. LaForge, yes. Mr. Peterson. Yes. That passed unanimous. Um, item number 131 is the authority to enter into an agreement. By, uh, presented by Secretary Gatz. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, the Department requests authorization to negotiate the terms and conditions of a lease agreement with the Oklahoma Capital Improvement Authority related to a loan from the United States Department of Transportation uh, pursuant to the Transportation Infrastructure Finance and Innovation Act. Uh, as authorized by House Bill 2896. Uh, pursuant to 2896, the proceeds of the TIFI loan will fund a portion of the department's rural two-lane advancement and management program. Uh, and that, again, is a, a program where we are uh, really seeking to add shoulders to our narrow rural two-lane highways that don't have shoulders on them today. Uh, those are the highways where we realize the highest percentage of severity rate accidents and fatality accidents uh, of any highways that we have. So really important program to us. This loan will allow us to accelerate the improvement of those real two-lane uh, highways and add shoulders to them at a, at a faster rate. And the rental payments will be made by ODOT to the Capital Improvement Authority pursuant to the lease agreement, uh, and that will cover the cost of the principal and interest on the related TIFI loan. Uh, the TIFI loan, again, is a program that's becoming an increasingly important tool in the department's toolbox, especially when it comes to projects like this. Uh, the TIFI loan uh, interest rate for this rural project initiative uh, is one half of treasuries and uh, again that interest rate presents a very attractive opportunity for us to accelerate some projects so uh, we recommend your approval and uh, authorization to proceed with the loan agreement you've heard the presentation do I have a motion for approval prime minister make a motion second forward second. second any discussion on this madam secretary please call the roll Mr. Coburn. Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley. Grimsley, yes. Mr. Shannon. Yes. Mr. Frymiller. Frymiller, yes. Mr. McCallan. McCallan, yes. Mr. Dyson. Dyson, yes. Mr. Alexander. Alexander, yes. Mr. LaForge. LaForge, yes. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Pass unanimous. Uh, item 132, <laughs> the Secretary's uh, report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I appreciate your consideration and authorization to proceed with that agreement. Again, uh, that's going to be a big help to us to move these projects forward faster. And uh, TIFIA, again, at the, the way that the USDOT has structured that innovative financing program uh, really is presents such a good opportunity, it's hard for us to ignore it. So uh, thank you for your consideration and approval. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would also recognize that I uh, saw Representative Nicole Miller join us uh, partway through the commission meeting, so certainly recognize her. And uh, thank you, Representative Miller, for, for uh, coming to the commission meeting this morning. Representative Miller is the vice chair of the uh, Transportation Appropriations Committee, so glad to have her with us. On the federal funding front, uh, I advise the commission that the Federal Highway Administration uh, put the department on notice that the Highway Trust Fund is experiencing some, some funding issues, uh, potentially to go into the red in sometime in mid-October. Uh, if that happens, uh, what ultimately the department will need to do is uh, operate off of a pro rata type of a reimbursement. 
the department pays our invoices on federally funded projects with state funds, turns around and files a reimbursement request with the Federal Highway Administration. If the trust fund goes into the uh, a situation where it's going month to month with deposits, uh, again, the department would only be able to be reimbursed at a pro rata share of whatever deposit was made to the trust fund. Um, again, we are very closely monitoring this situation. Uh, it's happened on multiple occasions since about 2008. We don't want to overreact to it, but it is serious. And, uh, you know, we will be, like I said, closely monitoring as we move closer through the month of September to the end of the federal fiscal year. Um, so, again, just wanted to make the commission aware of that condition. That flows directly into the reauthorization of our federal transportation bill. Uh, as we've discussed before, the reauthorization of a five-year highway bill has been rolled up into the bipartisan infrastructure plan, the $1.2 trillion plan. Not all of that is highway and bridge funding. Uh, there are many different types of infrastructure that are funded in that plan, but our five-year reauthorization has been rolled up into it. Uh, into the bill that's currently under consideration in the House. My understanding is, is that uh, the House is scheduled to vote for that on September 27th, so we will be paying very close attention to those proceedings. Uh, that would be the place where it would be likely that uh, the trust fund issue would be addressed uh, by the Congress uh, in the context of the reauthorization of the highway bill. So. Again, we'll watch that very closely and keep you apprised of those proceedings as we move closer to the end of the federal fiscal year. Uh, and if anything changes or if anything moves forward, we'll certainly advise you prior to the October commission meeting. Thought it was important this morning to recognize the opening of a new interchange at Interstate 40 and Frisco Road there on the west side of Yukon. Um, it's the, one of the newest interchanges that we've worked on in the last few years. Uh, that's an important project for the city of Yukon, uh, but it's not one that the department can go and undertake without the support of the community. And the support means uh, the city of Yukon came to the table with financial resources. Uh, they uh, did the environmental document, did the engineering work, uh, bought the right of way, moved the utilities, and participated in some of the construction costs. Those types of partnerships for that new access point uh, really are the only way that the department can move projects like that forward uh, very easily. Uh, our resources are focused directly on maintaining the highway system uh, from the center line out. So we're trying to get our arms around our pavement condition issues, our bridge condition issues, and make safety improvements. And it's very difficult for us to introduce a new access point like this without some assistance. So again, thanks for the uh, partnership from the city of Yukon. Uh, that's going to be a very high functioning interchange and uh, certainly one where we're very pleased to uh, add to the interstate system. It's rail safety uh, week in September. It occurs the week of September 20th through the 26th. Uh, certainly, the department partners with the Oklahoma Railroad Association and, and through Operation Lifesaver to take a hard look at uh, adding safety improvements at railroad crossings in the form of uh, lights, bells, uh, gate arms. And uh, I think it's most important to remember that when you encounter those types of uh, safety improvements, so if the gates are down, please don't drive around them. Uh, trains cannot stop, and when a passenger vehicle or a commercial vehicle uh, encounters a train, it, the outcome is never good. Uh, so again, we'd ask for the traveling public to be very careful and uh, really take a hard look at safety precautions and for uh, pedestrians. The uh, best thing you can do is to stay out of railroad rights away. Those are private rights away. and. Uh, we occasionally see a, a really bad outcome when a pedestrian is, is uh, around a rail crossing or, or along a rail line. Uh, we had four rail crossing improvement projects this month on the consent docket, so we appreciate your consideration and approval of those. 
and uh, look forward to future opportunities to enhance rail safety in the state of Oklahoma. Uh, kind of staying on the safety theme, uh, the safety campaign for the month of September is uh, focusing on the dangers of impaired driving. And that includes driving under the influence of alcohol, marijuana, uh, prescription drugs, and even driving while drowsy is characterized as driving with an impairment. Uh, so again, we want the uh, travel and public to really pay close attention to uh, their conditions before they get behind the wheel of a vehicle and be very careful and very mindful. The safety campaign, again, is always underpinned with seat belts and make safety stick, everybody click is kind of that underpinned uh, safety part of that campaign. And it's something that I personally am uniquely focused on. You guys have heard me talk about safety belt usage before and how Oklahoma has to do better. One of the ways that uh, individuals can protect themselves from a potential uh, injury accident or, or worse yet a fatality accident uh, is to use that first line of defense and buckle that seat belt. Uh, too many times we see accidents that somebody might have walked away from uh, result in a, a, a severe injury or fatality. So help us out, buckle up, let's get our fatality and severe accident numbers down in the state of Oklahoma. Uh, there's a very close relationship between seatbelt usage and the number of fatality and severe injury accidents we have. So please buckle your seatbelt. And you considered this morning, uh, for informational purposes, the uh, bridge hit uh, where we had a pretty catastrophic uh, bridge impact there on I-44. And, you know, that seems like uh, through the summer uh, we see a lot of bridge hits across the state of Oklahoma. And I think it's worth reminding uh, everybody that, uh, you know, our legal height in Oklahoma is 14 feet. Uh, we've got a lot of bridges out there on the system that are 14 foot six. So if you're hauling a load and you're approaching that 14 foot height, get the tape measure out, check that load height just to be absolutely sure. Double check it, make sure everything is boomed down and strapped down properly uh, and make sure that you're not exceeding the height limits. And uh, again, appreciate your consideration and approval of the Interstate 44 bridge repair. Uh, guys did a great job and will do a great job getting that uh, county road over uh, bridge facility back open. Uh, right now, Commissioner Peterson, we've removed that beam that was badly damaged in that section of the deck and the, the contract that you programmed this morning will put that lane back now and put a bridge beam back in there. Um, as you might imagine, ordering a bridge beam like that and getting that delivered uh, is a little bit time consuming, uh, so it'll take us just a minute or two to get that back, but the guys are working hard on uh, getting that contract ready to let, and uh, we'll advise you whenever that facility's back open here in the not too distant future, so. On a little bit better bridge note, uh, per the bridge inspection tape that was submitted at the end of December in 2020, uh, the department had 67 structurally deficient bridges on the system. Uh, that's less than 1% of the 6,800 bridges that we have. So we've met our target of getting to 1% structurally deficient bridges. More importantly, we just received uh, the national bridge inspection data, and we we're able to extrapolate from that a, a, a ranking for Oklahoma by uh, the statistics, and that's by number of bridges. And by number of bridges, Oklahoma now ranks number seven nationally uh, for best bridges in the country. So again, we appreciate your support uh, and everything that the commission has done. Tribute to Representative Miller and the legislators, uh, the leadership that we've got there long standing. Uh, we started this process back in 2006 and we have made steady progress 
with a laser focus on bridge infrastructure, diligence, and continued support, and that's what's been critical. Uh, the roads fund has been a primary factor there along with the focus that is in the eight-year construction work plan. And as part of the eight-year plan, we have not only these 67 structurally deficient bridges, but uh, probably seven or 800 more that'll be in the, the next approval uh, that are what we call at risk. Uh, we've got over a thousand bridges out the, on the highway system today that are 80 years old or older. Uh, and a lot of those bridges are, uh, you know, if you consider the bridge rating system is a zero through 10, 10 being the best, if they get to a four on any one of the, the bridge elements, deck, substructure, superstructure, then they go structurally deficient. Uh, we've got lots of them out there that are fives right now that we're really keeping a close eye on. So we are not done investing in our bridge infrastructure. We've got work to do. Uh, but we have done fantastic work with the resources that have been made available. So congratulations to the commission, uh, to all Oklahomans, and to everyone with the department and our engineering and contractor partners uh, that have played a role in helping us accomplish that. That is something that is uh, really to be proud of. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I would be happy to answer any questions that any of the commissioners may have. Chairman, one question. Mr. Secretary, thank you for that report. Congratulations on the ranking, on the national ranking uh, number seven. I'm just curious what the ranking was before. So we were, that is up two from number nine. Uh, we got into the top 10 in the 2019 report. And uh, again, we're up two this year. So Was that our first time in the top 10? When we were ranked number nine, yes, sir, in 2019, which is again, a uh, uh, an achievement that has taken us years to get to, but uh, it shows what focus and resources can accomplish. Are there any other questions? Yeah. Uh, that, the bridge that got hit, I assume that semi was at full speed when it hit it? From the, from the damage to that concrete beam, it was moving at a pretty good clip. I don't know exactly how, uh, how fast you can go with a dump bed up. Uh, that's the other thing. If you're running a, a tractor trailer with a dump bed or even just a regular dump truck, Please make absolutely sure that bed's down before you take out on the highway because uh, it it's, can do extreme damage to our bridge infrastructure, as evidenced by some of those photographs. Yeah, uh, it, as part of any of our safety partnership you know, campaigns, is there any way that we could maybe you know, raise awareness or do an additional? I mean, we could work with maybe some of the associations. Is it, would that, do you believe that would provide any benefit, just education to the public? Because it seems like it's. If you said it happens in the summer, <laughs> there may be some seasonal things maybe we should look at. Sure. I, I think that's a, a good idea, Commissioner Grimsley. We can reach out to uh, Jim Newport with the Trucking Association right. maybe um, and and visit with them a little bit, a bit to see about uh, some of the overheight loads. And again, if a, if a load is over 14 feet, then it's routed specifically on highways that don't have uh, height restrictions. Right. Uh, so th those get get picked up pretty red readily. It's the ones that are right there, you know, at 14 feet where uh, if the load shifts just a little bit, if it's a tank and it, it has a flange or something off the top of it that they didn't account for, that's where we see some of these hits originating from. And really, that that's just operator. They, the operators have to be really, really attentive to those height restrictions. And, uh, but that's a great point. I think we can put something together along those are, lines. Are there any existing statutes? I mean, if you're driving with a dump bed raised down an interstate, you're not dumping gravel. You shouldn't be. I mean, is there something that we – are there additional enforcements that we could be doing just, you know, to discourage that type of behavior, I think? I, I don't know that there is, yeah. is additional regulation that's needed. Right. Uh, it, it's unlawful to run with the bed in that condition, certainly yeah. unsafe. Yeah. Um, yeah line that I, I'm, I'm not going to be able to remember, but you can't fix stupid. Yeah, exactly. Um, it, I mean, that's just like yeah. so elementary. It's exactly. like you get in your car at night, you turn on the headlights. Right. Yeah, right. Well, you see people that drive without the headlights on. And so. But there's enformcement right now. It's what you're well, saying. Well, they need there's to be throttled and I hope this company uh, <laughs> has got lots of insurance and Sarah goes after them um, no that's just yeah. idiotic right, right and and but it happens to all of us we've got between Don and I you know a couple thousand truck drivers and occasionally they will do dumb things right, right. and they're 
coached and incented and all of that and trained, but stupid happens. Right. Well, the consequences could be, I mean, this type of stuff could, you know, there could be multiple fatalities. Oh, oh yeah. So it could it's be terrible. far far worse than just bridge damage. It's terrible. Yeah, so. yeah okay. we were e extremely fortunate with that particular accident that uh, there were no severe injuries. Um, but again, it, it's time loss to the detour because that's an interstate facility. Uh, that's not good. That county road is still closed. So again, a lot of moving parts to uh, putting something like that back together. And it, it's, you know, just simple. Check, check those loads. Uh, be there careful. There is a requirement that truckers carry a million dollars in liability, though, isn't there, in the state of Oklahoma? There's certainly a liability insurance requirement. I think it varies. It's actually 750000 If unless you're hauling hazardous material, then it's a million. Yeah. So it's... Well, the, 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 this is within the insurance range, so this will be paid for by somebody's insurance. Should be, shouldn't it? We would expect so. so the, the party that's known, that caused the damage is known, that's not always the case. But uh, in this particular instance, we do know, so... Uh, I've been an advocate forever to have all our scales and way stations open 24-7. And uh, if, if we had way stations open 24-7, seven, seven, that some of these things could be caught. And Commissioner, we're, we're closer today to, to having way stations open 24-7. Um, we're not there yet. But uh, ports of entry at the, at the borders certainly are open more often than not now. And uh, some of the internal way stations that you're talking about that would catch some of these uh, anomalies, uh, they're working really hard to get those open even more. So, uh, but it's us working together with both Department of Public Safety and the Corporation Commission to make sure we accomplish that. I know people will probably think, what is that man talking about? He's in the trucking business. At Believe me, we in the industry want it. Yeah, fleets I, that operate legally, excuse me, Don, the fleets that operate legally want the, the outlaws caught and fined. Because we, we've made that investment, and, and Don has, and the legitimate fleets do, but some people choose not to, yeah. and we'd like them caught. Absolutely, and that's why it's so important to continue to invest in that way station infrastructure, because some of it is still dated mm -hmm. out there and needs work. And uh, we'll continue to invest in not only the ports of entry, but uh, the internal way stations to make sure that uh, we're doing everything that we can to make sure that trucks are being legally op operated. Uh, again, DPS uh, has uh, highway patrol out there on the roads every day, uh, size and weights division, and they do a good job of spot inspections. Uh, they take <coughs> care of a lot of out-of-service uh, problems, but uh, we need more. Great, thanks. Um, I'd like to do a compliment to the District 2 staff. Uh, I have a front row seat to the Calera project, and it's been underway for a couple of years now, and that is an incredibly busy section of Highway 69 if you've ever driven it. And it's absolutely amazing how that project has progressed, how they're successfully diverting traffic over, minimizing impacts on the traveling public. And uh, you can really tell that the A-team is, is uh, at work on this. So I just wanted to compliment Mr. Kelly, Anthony Kelly, the district engineer and staff. They've done a very, very good job. Kept me up updated, but it's, it's moving very, very well. And yeah. it's something really nice to see. So. Thank you for that, Commissioner. I appreciate you recognizing that. That was the uh, largest contract the department ever let. And uh, it's been well managed. Got a great construction contractor on it. And uh, everybody's doing a good job. Uh, it will be really good when it's completed, but uh, they've done a good job under construction thus far, and we look forward to cutting a ribbon in it on it in not too distant future. So, thank you, Commissioner. Are there any other comments or questions? No. I'm open for a motion for adjournment. <laughs> <laughs> so moved. So moved. Second. Uh, Madam Secretary, call the roll. Mr. Coburn. Coburn, yes. Mr. Grimsley. Grimsley, yes. Mr. Shannon. Yes. Mr. Frymiller. Frymiller, yes. Mr. McCowan. McCowan, yes. Mr. Dyson. Dyson, yes. Mr. Alexander. Alexander, yes. Mr. LaForge. LaForge, yes. Mr. Peterson. Yes. The vote was unanimous. We're adjourned.